All right, we had a little bit of technical, a little bit of technical difficulty right there, but we're going to continue. Let's continue right here. So we've got verse 14 of chapter 9 and our 9-11 plus 10, right, and figuring out, now we figured out the 9-11 plus 10, that's 9-21, and Revelation chapter 9 verse 21 says that neither repented they of their murders nor of their pharmaceuticals or sorceries, nor of their fornication or pornication, nor of their thefts. You understand? Their thefts, and their thefts are, are many. There are many thefts, right? Now, verse 14, where we was at, it says that um, the sixth angel sounded, and Johannes or John heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is the golden altar of the Itan, or the Aishans, you understand, where the Kanabosim, or the cannabis, was one of the elements of the sacred incense that was burned in the temple of God. That's what we call, uh, for us as Rastafari, we have sacramental rights. You understand? And if men and people or man-made governments want to violate that, and we are founded on the rock. In other words, we are practicing our way of life according, you understand, to our way of life, according to covenant, then there's nothing that we really need to fear. You understand? What they need to fear is the judgment. You know, and judgment that in spite of all of their strength and temporal power, you understand, they are not able, they are not able to do the wickedness that they imagine against God's people. And that's plain and simple. But God gives them free will too. So in their free will, they have a, a right to do, you know, do what you will, do as thou wilt. You understand, while we seek to do our Father's will. You understand? Let his will be done. You understand? On earth as in heaven. So here is showing in the heavenly view that there is a golden altar that is before God, Ha Elohim, that is before the, the throne of God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. In other words, loose the four angels. So there's four angels, right? There are four angels which are bound. Now, who are these four angels? The Islamic and Mohammedan, um, in the Mohammedan scripture and Islam, they have a very interesting um, um, interpretation, or some may call it a speculation, on who and what are these four angels. There are four terrible angels which are bound. You understand? And perhaps that might have something to do with the terrorism and this, and this madness that's going on. It says to loose these four angels which are bound. Where are they bound? In the great river Euphrates. Now the great river Euphrates, and we have to be clear on this, is in that same land known as Iraq or ancient Babylon. That's where Euphrates is. So you see the connection between the 9-11 Revelation, chapter 9, verse 11. There's a connection right there. And it says in verse 15, and the four angels were loose. So these four angels were loose, which were, now check this out, which were prepared. These angels, these four angels that were bound, they were prepared for, get this, an hour and a day and a month and a year. These four angels were prepared for an exact hour and an exact day and an exact month and an exact year to do what? To slay the third part of men, to slay the third part of humanity. Now, this gives us something to meditate on, doesn't it? Furthermore, 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 it says in verse 16, and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. Now, some say that might be 200,000. Uh, no, some say that might be 200 um, million. Well, who could have an army? Who in the world could have an army that would be about maybe 200 million? Who, who could have an army about that number? The only one that can have an army about that number is China. Uh-oh, and China is the one that is coming up? Uh-oh. Oh, man. Ain't that something? And I heard the number of them, and I heard the number of them. Now, ones have said that either this number is 200,000, 
Some say the number could be 200, 200 million. And if it's 200 million, 200,000 would be the number of American troops that went over there. You understand that were over there in Iraq and in that region, that ancient region. Even though the region have different names, Iraq and Afghanistan, that region as one is what is being talked about here in Revelation. So we need to also note that. Now in verse 17 it says, And thus I saw the horses in the vision. The horses. He saw the horses in the vision. And them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of hyacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. And out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Now remember, Johannes is looking at this future, this future scape, in a sense, this future view, perspective, and he's trying to interpret it so that people of his time and times after could understand exactly what he saw in this prophetical view. You understand? In this prophetical view. And in verse 18 it says, By these three was the third part of men killed. Men were killed either by fire, either by smoke, or by brimstone, and by brimstone which issued out of their mouths, which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth. Their power is in their mouth and in their tails. That means that the, this kind of military apparatus shoots from the front and the back. In other words, it has front guns or missiles, and it has rear guns or missiles. You understand? And it says, um, for their tails were like two serpents. Their tails. Now, what, does, what, what kind of, how does the serpent, see, we have to understand how these, these natural creatures move. And in and, 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 and the concrete slave ship known as the projects in the ghetto, you understand, we don't have a good perspective on these things. So we have to watch a little bit of nature channels, PBS, or sometimes uh, National Geographic to even understand the, the creation again, if we are to even try to comprehend what's written here in this prophetical book. The people then understood it better but didn't know the modern technology. Certain things did not come to pass. Remember, Johannes saw all of this in a, in a vision. So it says that, that um, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt, and with their heads, their heads they do hurt because the head of it, the head of it is where the pilot or the one who controls it is in. Now, a third part of the people in the world would be in the Middle Eastern region. You understand? A third part of the people in the world, the Middle Eastern region and 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 um and China, not in the West, not in Europe, and unfortunately not in Africa either. You understand? Africa, the majority of Africa is just land. And animals, the majority of it, the people are all corralled mostly in cities. Most of that is just land, something to think about. Now, verse 20 and 21 go together. In order to understand 9-11 plus 10, verse 20 and 21 goes together, though 21 is the main part of 9-11 plus 10. So beginning with verse 20, it says, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands. They wasn't killed by these plagues, perhaps because it was in a different region of the world. So they wasn't killed by these plagues that were killing people in the, in the next part of the world, so-called Middle East, but they're over here. So it says that they did not repent, not, they repented not of the works of their hands, of what they did, of their manu, their manufacture. That's what the word manu, manu is hand. Mano a mano mean hand to hand. So mono is manufactured. So they didn't repent of what they, what they made or what they manufactured. And they said that most of what America makes right now is like military stuff besides, you know, the kind of, um, you know, hip-hop and music and, and the image in Hollywood and, and, and all of that, which is also a part of it. But it says that they didn't repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils. And more and more has been coming out that the majority of these artists and people in media have, have um, 
made a covenant in order to be successful with the God of the world, with Satan, with the devil. You understand? Have made a covenant. You understand? And they show it by their different signs, the hand signs and certain other things. They show what their allegiance is. You understand? Or their allegiances are. And their allegiance are not to the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but it's to the Antichrist or the devil. So they didn't repent of these things, nor of the idols of gold and of silver, which is the bling bling. They didn't repent of that. You understand? And brass and stone and of wood, which can, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. Because they worship these material things. Notice when they have these um, natural disasters, and people are so, some of them are so torn up by the material things that they lose. And they often tell you, this, this house was my life. The house was your life? I mean, you've got to waste your life. You understand? But they are so torn up about the things that they lost because they worship these things. They, they give worth and value. In other words, if they have these things, then they feel more better. You understand? It's like that commercial they have on TV and stuff like um, because you become, because you feel like a hip-hop mogul or a hip-hop millionaire. This is why you have a little dog or you do this or you do that. You feel like the paparazzi is watching you because such and such. In other words, people are being so deceived. This is what it's basically saying. And now verse 21 hits it right on the head because it says that Ten years later, they still didn't get it. You understand? Ten years later, in fact, more people are worshiping the image of the beast ten years later, believe it or not, than back in 2001, September 10th. You understand? More people now than then. That's just very interesting. You understand, more people have been caught up. In other words, if it was a plot, if it was a plan, it's worked like, like they say, it worked like clockwork, but it's not over just yet because the, they have to do this, this memorial, this 10th anniversary, and they got big plans. They got a lot of big plans for this 10th anniversary, and we might be able to see some of it and witness it, but one thing is very clear, and one thing should be made understood that 9-11 plus 10 brings us to Revelation chapter 9, verse 21. And there's not a verse 22, and there's not, and there's not a verse 20, and it's not just verse 20, you understand? But it's actually 21 verses to chapter 9 of the book of Revelation. And that 21st verse says something that is, is key and interesting and has a relevance and a resonance with what's going on today. It says that humanity or these people did not repent of their murders. They did not repent of their sorceries. They did not repent of their fornication nor of their thefts. And this is, this is the thing that we really have to meditate on and, and, to be, and to pray that the blood of our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the life of our Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMoshi, you understand, be with us and in us. And may we be preserved, you know, to come out of this spiritual Egypt and this deception that we all are in. So, my brothers and sisters, this is a, a Shabbat time, a, a Sendbeth, a Sabbath time. We haven't got into the Torah portion um, readings as of yet because there was much to catch up on. And the 9-11 times or 9-11 plus um, 10 was what we had promised from the very beginning to, to, to update you on and, to, and to, to reason on this, and hopefully we've been able to fulfill that in the name of the King of Kings and his Christ. So once again we say, Shalom, Aras Teferi.